Hey, Merry fucking Christmas. We are going to uh, have a little bit of uh, eggnog here that I have left over so I can drink it before it expires. And we're going to drink some of that and uh, talk about the uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night remake, which is just called uh, Silent Night that came out, I don't know, in the past couple of months, something like that. Um, I just actually just watched it. I, I just got done. I just got done watching the thing, and yes, it actually is Christmas that I'm recording this. Cause I'm so alone. <laughs> now my family and I just wrapped up stuff early, so I came came home like, all right, well, today's as good a time as any is to watch a Silent Night, Deadly Night remake. And I have to give them props in this. At least they didn't call it Silent Night, Deadly Night. So now when I say that I really like Silent Night, Deadly Night. I can say, I really like Silent Night, Deadly Night, as opposed to saying, saying I really like the original Silent Night, Deadly Night, which I said this before is one of the things I find most annoying out of remakes, other than the fact that most of them aren't very good. <clears throat> but this one, is it a remake? <clears throat> yeah, like, it certainly does its own thing. And uh, th there's there's references to it that do make it you know, kind of a remake, you know, in the in the I guess in the same in the same way that really yeah, any remake that sort of does its own thing, but really but it, but is still a remake goes about it, which which is what I prefer. If you are going to do a remake, do something different with it. Just don't just carbon copy the other movie. Um, now, is this one any good? No, but it's better than a Christmas story too. <laughs> it is. It's. It's not very good. I've seen way worse in terms of remakes. Um, I wasn't angry while watching it. I wasn't like pissed off. I wasn't like, oh, this betrays the sanctity of Silent Night, Deadly Night. I didn't think that, but. I really, really like Silent Night, Deadly Night, the original movie. I like it a lot. I think it's one of the better slasher movies of, of that era. Mainly because that one, I mean, especially in that era, that one did a lot of... It did it did things a little differently. And I, I found the original Silent Night, Deadly Night to, to be relatively clever in how it went, it went about itself. Um... In that it was a slasher movie that was really told from the point of view of the killer. I like that. You didn't see that in a lot of the, the movies. You don't see that in a lot of slasher movies anyway, but especially back then. And, and also, it, it took its time. It took its time in really building up the movie's killer as a three-dimensional character. I mean, I mean, yeah, once Billy in the original, once, once he did start killing people... Yeah, I mean, he, he hacked him up with the axe, he, he put puts him on antlers and stuff like that, and he shouts out stuff like, PUNISH and NAUGHTY and stuff like that. But there was there was a build-up to that. It took the whole first half of the movie to show you how horrible this fucking kid's life was between the parents getting killed, the orphanage, the shit at the toy store and all of that. It took its time. It took its time to really... To really get, show us how this guy really fucking went insane, um, and if that's not your thing, you're not gonna like Silent Night, Deadly Night. But I, I like, I like that about that movie. I thought it did it really well. I thought, the, I thought the kills were really good. Uh, the movie, I thought it was a fairly well made movie. Um, the music, I thought the music was good. The Santa's watching theme, like that. <laughs> that legitimately really should be played on the radio come holiday season. And I'm not just saying that just to be like a dick. It's like kind of a really good Christmas song. <laughs> like, if I heard that song and like didn't know it was from a slasher movie, I would think like, okay, well that's just a classic old Christmas tune that I haven't heard before, I guess. But no, like, I always really like that song a lot. I've put it in... I don't think I put it in anything this year, but over the past couple of years, I've used that song in, in some Christmas videos. Like, I think last year's 80s Dan Christmas I used it in, and maybe a Brad tries or two. I, I, I don't know. But but anyway, so so I really liked that about the original Silent Night, Deadly Night, and then came Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, which 
is is bad, but it's funny. You know, it, it's really entertaining, and it, it has value. It has it has value to it, and that like it's it's fun to watch. It's just like a really shitty movie. Um, I've I've seen Silent Night Deadly Night too many times, uh, and the third one is just bland and boring and forgettable. Uh, this one, I mean, my problems that I have with this one is just like it's mainly. It's nothing really substantial. It's just mainly a lot of problems I have with a lot of modern day slasher movies. Is it, it looks they all they all look the same to me, and not in a good way because it's a style that I don't like when it comes to these kind of movies. You know, I like them to look really gritty and grainy and kind of schlocky. It, it adds it adds to the ch it adds to the charm of the movie and it also adds to the atmosphere of the movie and anymore ever since I guess the mid 90s a lot of slasher movies just look they're too polished they're too neat they look like music videos they they don't they look soulless they they look which which is kind of weird about saying about Silent Night Deadly Night because I'm sure whoever made this he probably, I mean, he probably likes the original fine, um, whereas the guy who made, uh, Chuck Sellier, who made the, the original Silent Night, Deadly Night, like, hates that movie with a fucking fiery passion, so, but yet, that's a much better movie than this one, that's probably made by a dude who, he, he probably, he probably likes the, uh, the other one fine, um, but it, it again, it looks... I mean, it looks not unlike a remake from Platinum Dunes, which is just a lot of shaky cam, a lot of a lot of music video qualities to it, and it, it's not a style. It's not a style that I like, um, especially when you get into nowadays how they use a lot of CGI gore in movies and stuff like that, which is just odd. In that, like the movie looks the movie looks more polished and like kind of more expensive remakes in general not really silent night deadly like remakes of horror of slashers in general they look you know they try to make them more polished they try to make them look like they have a bigger budget which most of them probably do yet you throw in these cgi effects that look cheaper and faker and look like crap now the remake of silent night deadly night actually the gore is pretty good in it the, uh there's characters with like guts and intestines hanging out and shit um, some some of the gore shots are good. There's a pretty effective scene that involves a wood chipper, and that's done fairly well. Um, it's got a lot of tits in it, of course. Um, but so so he, they they did kind of well in that department. It's just shot really shaky, and like they they redo. There are nods to the original in the movie. <clears throat> there are some nods to the original in this, but. Before I go off into the into, into any of that, the movie itself, like what, what I was getting at earlier about the original being really good at give at giving us this character Billy and spending a lot of time on him, showing the movie really from his point of view and how he became like that. This one is the opposite of that. It spends no time. On the villain at all. He's just a fucking guy in a Santa suit, this gargantuan motherfucker with a mask and a beard and an axe and a flamethrower, um, just going around killing people. That's 99% of the movie. Like, there's, there's no, the opening scene in the movie is him killing a bunch of people with, like, Christmas lights and shit. He electrocutes a guy with Christmas lights. And, uh, one girl, he just, like, chop, chops to fucking pieces. Th that's your opening fucking scene of the movie. That's There's your fucking build-up. Hey, your build-up of the movie is, hey, um, apparently he's done this before. That's your fucking build-up for the for this fucking killer. It, it's, it's nothing. It's a nothing, nothing, nothing fucking killer. You don't even find out who the killer in the movie is until the last scene. And no one ever figures out who he is. It's just an epilogue put in there just so we, the audience, know who the killer is. There's an earlier flashback in the film where there's a drunk Santa at a bar who's saying, like, who's 
who's saying stuff like, like, this ain't the first time his Santa Claus has done something terrible. And then it flashes back to this guy who, he found out his wife was cheating on him, so he took, he dresses Santa and took a flamethrower and just sprayed them all down with fire and shit like that, and, and then that's it. So you're kind of like, you're sitting like, okay, I guess the killer's gonna have something to do with this. And then, and anyway, then at the end, it shows the killer, and even... Boy, do I mean it's the fucking opposite of the original. Because the original, yeah, you knew who the fucking killer was because the movie was about the fucking killer. In this one, I kind of... The movie ended, and I was actually sort of confused as to who the killer was. Like, I had to sort of double-check it on fucking online to see if I was right or if I was wrong. Because who the killer is is the son of the dad who, like, sprayed his family down with fire. He's the son. It got a little confusing because he's played by the same actor who plays the father, and then when it flashes back, you see the son in the car witnessing all this shit happening. <clears throat> but, but then when it's showing the killer in modern time, present in this in this little ending scene from the movie, he has, like, scars across his face, like, burn scars. So I thought, like, okay, so is it the dad? Because the dad got burned himself. Um, the, da the dad got fucking engulfed in flames himself. So it's like, wait, is it the dad? or is it They're wanting me to think it's the son, but why has he got burns across his face? The burns are supposed to be from the night before where... where the, you know, where they think he's dead, but he's not. Anyway, he, he like, got, sh got set on fire. So I guess these burns are supposed to be fresh, but they look they look like a Freddy Krueger costume. They don't look... They look like they just cut a piece off of a Freddy, co Freddy mask and just stuck it on the side of his face, so it looked kind of old. <laughs> it looked a little fucking old. I'm talking, like, sequel Freddy Krueger, not, like, part one and two, where... The burns were very much still wet and fresh. I, that was a great look, bro. I like that look a lot. Um, but anyway, no, no, no. It looks like cheap Freddy Krueger. Um, so that was honestly kind of confusing. Like, that is so the opposite of the fucking first movie. And it just didn't even do well. It, You know, it, at the end of the day, this movie, it's not, it's not offensively bad or anything like that. Like, I'm not... I'm not going to get pissed off at it or anything. Um... Because, like, you could probably do a really good reboot of Silent Night, Deadly Night. I, I don't... I don't really think that that's a slasher movie that's necessarily above being remade. But this one, it's just... On its, on its own, it's just not very good. It's just a standard... It's just a standard cut-and-paste fucking slasher movie. Like, all of your elements are there in, of a modern-day slasher movie. And that's... And that's really it, really. It adds nothing. It does nothing. Everything that was really, really, really good about the first movie is not done well here at, at all. There's no traces of any of that here whatsoever. Um, your your main character is... Your main character is, a, is Jamie King as a sheriff's deputy. <laughs> okay, so she's she's the sheriff's deputy, and she's such a depressing, downer fucking character. Like, she's the rookie in the sheriff's department who keeps choking every time that she comes in contact with some semblance of danger. She always screws up and then cries about it, and she's sad because she had a husband, I guess, who had died the Christmas before, and now she's sad. She just kind of mopes her way through this movie, and that's our lead fucking character right there. Ugh. And the Damn, this is really good. Um, and the funny thing is, she shouldn't be the lead character in this movie, because top billing, top billing is Malcolm McDowell as the sheriff. And he's really fun. Like, he's really, really fun. Honestly, he kind of keeps me from hating this movie. Because every other character in this movie is really annoying. Either you got mopey Jamie King, or bratty kids, or like slutty blonde girl who's 
terrible, and uh, or you got uh, perverted Santa Claus played by Donald Logue, or perverted fucking priest who sinks every scene he's fucking in. Oh my god. Picture the most perverted fucking priest you've ever seen in a movie. I just pile and pile and pile on that. Like, everything except him just whipping out his dick and jerking off on children. Like, <laughs> that's the priest in this fucking movie. Like, Jamie King is in the church, and uh, he, like, puts his arm on. He's like, oh, if you need someone to talk to, pretty sheriff's lady, you just, you just come to me. I'm always open. And then he gives a sermon later, which is, says, Christmas has always been about mm, sinners. Ugh! So that's his few fucking scenes in this movie. And, but Malcolm, so Malcolm McDowell owns every scene he's in, because Malcolm McDowell doesn't give a fuck in this. Like, he's just, he's just kind of having fun, where he's like, he's like, there's a... <laughs> There's a cocksucking killer Santa Claus in my town, and I'm gonna bring him to fucking justice. Like, he's... We should be following around him. Like, he'll be talking to Jamie King, and then he'll, he'll just be like, Now I'm gonna go do my fucking job and get this piece of shit Santa Claus. We should be following him! Instead, we follow Jamie King, go off to, I don't know, like, talk to some drunk guy in a bar, and then she cries some more. I don't know. But he's got some... There's... There... <laughs> he's got some pretty good lines in this. Like, he like he uh, says... Uh, they're putting on a chalkboard a list of their uh, suspects, and the guy's last name... One of their suspects' last name is Carson, and he misspells it. Jamie King's like, that's Carson with two S's. Huh? Two S's. S-S. Ha! For double screwed. And, and he, wa he wants to bring in this Carson guy who's just like this local drug dealer, Santa Claus. And she's like, but I don't, I don't think it's him. Like, yeah, he's, he's a bad guy. He's bad, but I don't think he's our killer. And Malcolm McDowell's just like, like, Deputy, don't put avocado on the hamburger. And she's literally, she just goes, what? And he's... Keep things simple. We must bring in Carson. <laughs> and then she's like, but all this evidence and this evidence. Uh, uh, deputy, now you're putting hummus on the burger. <laughs> he's, he's fun. He's pretty fun in this movie. Like, he is, when he's on screen, like, you can just piece together his scenes and just watch those. And you'd think you watched a pretty fun short film. Because all told, he's probably only in this for about 15 minutes. Honestly, he alone really keeps me from hating this movie. Because he's having a pretty good time in this. Like, he, he, he seems to be... Ho, 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 fucking ho. Like, he seems to be having a delightful time in this. And any time he's on screen, I was, I was laughing. I was laughing. Because he was, he was really funny. Uh, everything else, though, is just really bland, modern-day too clean and neat for its own polished good slasher movie that looks like a music video, like I said. And it's just, it's just not what I like in, in, in a slasher movie. I, I mean, yeah, the movie's got plenty of gore, it's got plenty of nudity, but that's not the, that's not all that makes a slasher movie good. Does a good slasher movie have a lot of gore and have a lot of nudity in it? Yeah! But it's not the only thing that makes that good. You have to have, you have to have something in there to, to carry all of that, you know. Um, just like, just like you would in any any, you know, stock characteristic of any other genre. You still need stuff there to carry the qualities of it. And this movie doesn't really have a lot of that, uh, except for Malcolm McDowell, who's really fun, but he's really just a supporting character in this. Um, all the other characters are really just kind of bland and, and annoying, and, and they do throw in references from the original. There's the uh, there's the grandpa who grabs his grandson's arms. It's like, 
Like, you best beware, Santa Claus. But here, it's like, he's not even talking to a kid here. He's talking to this stoner dude. The stoner dude's like, I'm gonna get my ride polish tonight, Grandpa. Woo! Grandpa grabs his hand like, you best be careful. Santa's out there. You see Santa, you run. And, of course, when he's saying it, like, in the original, like, that was kind of creepy. In this one, when he's saying it, they added effects to his voice to to make him echoey and shit like that. It was really artificial and bad. And there's a, there's a couple other references. Uh, there's a girl who gets impaled on the deer antlers. And that was shot poorly. Like, again, really shaky. Just shaky and, like, the lens flares in this thing. Oh my god. There's a lot. Of, you could probably freeze frame a part of this. And you'll count about 16 fucking lens flares on the, in a single fucking frame. God. There, there's probably more lens flares in this than that piece of shit Total Recall remake. Jesus Christ. Um, and there is a reference to Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. <laughs> That actually kind of made me groan a little bit, because it could have been... When the internet proves that you can do pretty funny Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 references, um, you've, you've, and, and if you're going to put that in your remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night, you got to go one step beyond, because there's, there's a lot of Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 references out there. Believe me, I've done a fucking couple. Um... So if you're also gonna do that in your movie, you gotta kind of, you you gotta kind of put a, put a little bit of heart to it. All it is in this is uh, one of the deputies is leaving the police station. Malcolm McDowell sitting there reading the newspaper, and the deputy starts singing to Malcolm McDowell. He says, uh, he's like, and a happy new year, and all that. Malcolm McDowell is looking at him, just like, what is this fucking glee? And he's like, no, I'm just, you know, singing. It's Christmas Day, you know? Malcolm McDowell goes like, well, just take the trash outside. Um, and uh, so Debbie's like, okay. So he's carrying... You see where I'm going. He's carrying the garbage outside. And all nothing really happens with... All he does is he's, he's kind of mocking Malcolm McDowell a little. He just kind of goes like, Ooh. he's like, what is this, Glee? <laughs> Well, what is this, Sheriff? Garbage day? That's it. That's that's it. That's it right there. And I I was sitting there, and I did just kind of go like, oh, like that. Like, put some fucking effort into your garbage day fucking reference. Really? That's the city. He just takes out the trash and says, "What is this, garbage day?" That's it. That's 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 it. There's, there's your fucking reference right there. <clears throat> so, at the end of the day, uh. Is there anything else about Silent Night, the, the Silent Night remake? Um, if it's just your basic, forgettable, modern-day slasher movie. Like, you could put it there with the Chainsaw remake, the Friday the 13th remake, stuff like that. Movies that are just forgettable. That's, that, that, that's it, really. And in terms of, like, most of those Platinum Dunes movies, that's usually been my biggest complaint, is just that they're very basic. They're very... The characters aren't very good. They're very unlikable. They're very annoying. And they're, they're shot like music videos. They're too polished looking. That's my feelings on those. And if one is good, I'll admit when it's good. I'm not one of those guys... I am not one of those guys who hates a remake just because it's a fucking remake. I don't. You can have a good fucking remake. You can. There have been remakes for as long as there have been movies. You can do a good remake. You can. But, you know, at least have it be memorable. <laughs> because, like, because this one, it's not, it's, it's not a cookie, co it's not a carbon copy remake. I'll give it that. And neither is the Chainsaw remake. Neither is the Friday the 13th remake. But what they do is still not very good. Um, it's just very forgettable. And Friday the 13th remake did do some stuff that pissed me off. Um, but, again, not enough to where I had a fucking heart attack over it. Like, I pretty much forgot it a few days later. So, 
so this one, yeah, it's it just it, it 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 really it really just is what it fucking is. That's that's it. I mean, it, 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 I I I wouldn't I wouldn't rec I wouldn't recommend the movie. I I wouldn't. It's it's not a very good slasher movie. It's got 15 minutes worth of good Malcolm McDowell stuff in it, but just not, just. Nothing, nothing else about it is really all that good. And why am I even fucking talking about the fucking Silent Night remake right now when Django Unchained is playing? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go see Django Unchained. I'll talk to you guys later.